Before getting started, here's a quick disclaimer. The product that I'm going to show you in this video is actually used by red teamers for security auditing and it is not meant to be used to get into others computers or devices without their consent that's absolutely illegal and you should not do it please keep that in your mind you will get into trouble if you are found getting access into someone else's devices without their consent so do not do it this product is meant to be a security auditing tool so use it for the same and not for any illegal activities don't tell me that i didn't tell you i told you be careful okay so in this video i'm going to show you a very interesting a very naughty product and uh there you go. This is the product that I'm talking about. If you could see that, it's called an OMG cable. And let me quickly unbox it and show you what it actually is. So there you go. This is what I'm talking about. It's actually a really simple, uh, very basic accessory. It's a charger for your smartphone. Um, in this case, if you could see, it is, if I can get that to focus, Please focus, there you go. I don't know if you could see that, but it's actually a lightning cable, a lightning cable to USB-A. So um, basically it's used to charge an iPhone, an iPhone, you could basically charge an iPhone with it. But definitely this is just not any normal charger. I mean, yeah, definitely you could charge your, um, your iPhone with it. You, you could actually also use it for data transfer, just like any other lightning cable. And this actually comes in different variants, like, uh, it comes in, if you're using an Android phone, for example, that has a USB-C port, it also comes in a USB-C port, USB-C to USB-A, it comes in micro USB to USB-A, lightning to USB-C, and uh, different kinds of variants, uh, if I can say. But um, I'm going to show you what this cable is actually capable of, because this is a really naughty device. You could actually get hacked with just this cable. Someone could approach you with this table and they can be like, hey, can I just charge my phone? My battery is dead. And if you allow them to uh, charge their phone uh, from your computer using this cable, chances are you'll be hacked. So this video is like a lesson to everyone watching it that you should never trust any external device. You should never blindly insert or plug any external device into your computer or into your laptop. It's always dangerous. Even if something you're plugging in is as basic as a cable, a charging cable to charge your phone or an iPad or whatever it is. So as I said, this cable actually has something really um, interesting inside it. it. It actually has a Wi-Fi access point, which means if I connect it to any computer, it actually acts as a Wi-Fi access point, which means you can connect to this device and you can control it basically and what it does or what it can do is it can inject keystrokes in other words or in simpler words this actually acts as a keyboard when you plug it in it can automatically send keystroke injections into your computer now this might sound familiar to you if you watched my previous video on um, USB rubber ducky, if you did not watch that yet, I suggest you go ahead and watch it first. Link will be in the description or in the suggested cards above. So basically USB rubber ducky is also similar to this, but instead of a cable, it's basically like a USB. And if you, if you insert that USB into a device, it acts as a keyboard and it will send or inject keystrokes that are pre-programmed pre inside it. Now this is similar to a USB rubber ducky, but it's more complicated, it's more advanced, it, it's more sophisticated, whatever the word you would like to use for it. It basically has more capabilities than a USB rubber ducky. The most important difference between this and a USB rubber ducky is that you could access or you could control this uh, cable remotely. Um, as I said, it has a Wi-Fi access point inside it, so you could connect to that Wi-Fi and you can access or control uh, this particular cable and you can basically program the keystrokes while connected to the victim. You don't have to pre-program it. And the second thing is that this can also act as a key logger. That's right, it can act as a hardware key logger. So if you connect this cable between a keyboard and a computer, it can actually capture all the keystrokes or all the keys that are pressed on the, uh, the on the victim's keyboard. So enough of the theory, enough of uh, the speaking, let me actually go ahead and practically show you what it can do, what it is capable of doing and how anyone can actually hack you with just a charging cable 
like this. So let's go ahead and see this cable in action. Okay, so as you can see, this is my laptop right here that is running Windows 10 and I'm going to plug in my OMG cable to this laptop and we are basically considering this laptop as a target machine and we are going to do our experiments on this target machine right here. So the end goal here is to be able to hack into this target machine. In this case, it's a Windows laptop, but it works for any operating system. So let me get my cable. This is the cable and I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to plug the USB A end of it to my laptop. So let me go ahead and do that carefully. Uh, okay, there you go. So it's plugged in. Uh, now that we plugged in, it's getting it's getting the power from the laptop. So if I plug my iPhone to this end, to this uh, lightning uh, end, my iPhone will get charged. As I said, it also acts as a charging cable and also as a data transfer cable. But this is just kind of like a decoy. There's nothing happening in this side. All this thing is uh, actually happening on the USB-A end of it. Okay, so now let me go ahead and get my MacBook. I have it lying around here. So if I open my MacBook and if I go to my Wi-Fi, um, you can see that these are all the Wi-Fi's available. I'm actually waiting for my uh, cable's access point to come up here. So there you go, you can see that the last Wi-Fi with the name XD is actually the access point of my cable. So let me go ahead and try to connect to it. So once I'm connected, I can just go to 192.168.4.1 and I can see a web app like this. This is the web app that I'll be interfacing with and using this I'll be able to, con uh, I'll be able to basically control in this case the Windows laptop. So, um, what can we do? You can see the first tab is a keylog tab. As I said, this also acts as a hard hardware keylogger, but I'm not going to demonstrate that to you in this video because I do not have a keyboard with a detachable uh, functionality, with a detachable cable, in other words. But if I get a keyboard like that in the future, I will make a separate video on that. But for now, we're going to deal with this payload tab. So this is where we can insert a ducky script and we can run it. Uh, right from here. So if you do not know what's meant by a ducky script, uh, it's basically a scripting language, a very easy, very simple, basic scripting language. So using this scripting language, you can tell the device, in this case, the cable, what keys to inject or what keys to send to the target device. So in this case, uh, let me start uh, with a very, very basic script, right? So what I'll say is I'll say delay and let's say we wait for 300 milliseconds before doing anything so that we are basically giving it an interval to start with. And then I'll say GUIR, uh, which is basically holding command R, which brings up the run pop-up window in case of a Windows operating system. And inside that, uh, I, want, I want it to open a YouTube video. What YouTube video should we make it open? I will just go to my channel and I'll bring up one of my most recent videos. I'll copy that. And here I will type in the string which is just the link of the YouTube video. And uh, that's it. Uh, I can just say enter, which will hit the enter key, which then opens uh, that particular YouTube URL in the default browser. Actually, let's add some delays because my laptop might be slow to respond to these keystrokes. So that's it. Uh, that's basically it. That's a simple ducky script to basically open up a YouTube video in the browser. So let me go ahead and show you how that looks like. Okay. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. So three, two, one, I clicked on run. It says running payload and let's look at the uh, laptop. So it brought up the run pop-up, opened up the YouTube video in the browser and it's taking some time to load the YouTube video because, of, because my laptop is actually laggy, but there you go. Okay, so that is the YouTube video that I linked to in the ducky script. So all of this is done by this naughty cable over here. So we can do a lot of other things. So for example, let's try to grab all the Wi-Fi passwords of the target device or the target machine. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So in this case, I want to get the uh, Wi-Fi password of the Wi-Fi name TechRaj ATEL. I want to get the clear text password of this network. So um, I can actually execute a simple PowerShell command. Okay, so I have changed the script like this. So first, as usual, it will open up the run pop-up and it will open PowerShell this time instead of opening a YouTube URL. 
and inside PowerShell, it's going to execute this command right here. So basically what we're trying to do is we are trying to get the profile of the Wi-Fi network techraj ATL and we are uh, we want to see the plain text password. So we are passing in this extra argument that says key is equal to clear, which will display the password, the Wi-Fi password of that particular network in plain text, which is what we want. So, and then it's going to encode that, uh, that, that all that output into base 64 so that it would be easier to send it to the attacker machine, in this case, our MacBook. And then finally, we are invoking a web request and we are sending a get request to this particular IP address um, with, uh, with the encoded output which which contains the profile that has the secret or the wi-fi password so before running this script from my macbook i will actually save it by clicking on save and i will save it to slot one and if i click on save that will now be saved to slot one so that whenever i want to execute that particular script i can just load that script from slot one and it will be automatically retrieved to the script area and i can just run it so i am going to disconnect from my uh, access point from the cables access point and i'm going to connect to some other network because i'm trying to get the data from the target machine to myself but if i'm on the cables access point i cannot get that data because it's not accessible over the internet and also the target machine is not in that network so i will simply switch my network and in order to run that i will use my phone instead i will simply go ahead go to my wi-fi settings and i'll connect to the xd network which is the access point of my cable so basically instead of accessing the web app on my macbook i'm going to access it on my phone so i am going to go to 192.168.4.1 okay there you go now i am connected to my cable from my iphone and I can now basically use the same web app that I previously used on my MacBook to interact with the data cable. So I have already saved my script into slot one. So I will go ahead and load that script. So I'll say load and I will select slot one and I click on load and there you go. That's the script that I typed in from my MacBook. Now I can just simply hit on run and that script will run on my laptop on my target machine. But before doing that, I'll come back to my MacBook and I actually have to start a, a, a Python web server so that we can actually capture the data that's being sent from the, from the target machine. So I'll say Python uh, 3-m HTTP.server and I'll start that on port 80, which is the default port. And there you go, it's now serving uh, a HTTP server on port 80. Now I'll go ahead and click on run and let's see what happens. It says running payload and on my target machine, it opened up PowerShell first. Um, yep, there you go. Okay, okay, you saw that something happened, right? Um, so what it did was it executed the netsh wlan show profile command to show the profile of that Wi-Fi network and it encoded all that output and it sent it to my to my attacker machine in this case it's my macbook where my python web server is running so if i come back to my macbook you can see that i got a get request with this particular data so i will just copy all this data and i will just uh, open up a new tab how do i open up a new tab yeah there you go and i will just uh, echo that and i will try to base 64 decode it there you go so it got base64 decoded. This is the output that we got. It's not really well formatted to be honest. Uh, it's all messy, but it should work for now. Let's actually start looking for the Wi-Fi password in clear text. So you can see that it says key content and it says the password in clear text, which in this case is test password. And that is indeed the password, uh, the Wi-Fi password of my network, I can confirm that. I've changed it to test password for the sake of this demonstration. So you just saw that we were able to actually retrieve the Wi-Fi passwords from the target machine to the attacker machine by making use of this cable. That's awesome, right? So now the final showdown. Can we get a reverse shell to the target machine? Let's see. Okay, so let me go ahead and load the reverse shell script, which I saved to slot two, if I'm not wrong. I'm gonna load that. There you go, this is the ducky script to get the reverse shell. So we are basically getting a reverse shell on 192.168.1.9, which is the IP address of my MacBook. 
and the port 1560. So before running this script, I have to actually start a listener on my MacBook so that I can capture that reverse shell. So let me go back to my terminal on my MacBook and let me stop my Python server. Do I have netcat installed? Okay, I do have netcat installed. So I'll just say nc lvnp 1560 and there you go, the listener is now running. Okay, uh, now I will just go ahead, make sure my recording is turned on on my target machine. And if I click on run now, uh, there you go, it says running payload and on my Windows machine, it should open up PowerShell and it did something. It yeah, it did, it did something. Oh, there you go. It says connection received from 192.168.1.12, I mean, and that is the IP address of my target machine, my Windows laptop, which means I now have the reverse shell from my target machine. So if I say, who am I now? Um, there you go. This is the name of my laptop, uh, my target machine. So that's a success. We now have a reverse shell to my target machine and now I can do anything. And yeah, I can access files, I can download files, I can even start new processes, I can uh, do privilege, privilege escalation, I can uh, get persistence so that whenever the target machine turns on, my payload will automatically run and I'll automatically get the backdoor and all that stuff. I can do a lot of things. Getting a reverse shell to a machine is nothing but having a remote access to that machine which means you can basically do anything. That's that's cool and it also sounds scary at the same time. And all that happened just because of one simple innocent looking charging cable like this. Once again, I'm reiterating this, never ever plug any unknown or untrusted accessories or any devices to your computer. They can be malicious like what we have just seen. They can be doing something naughty without your knowledge and you might end up getting hacked and you just saw how easy it is for any hacker to get into your computer so yes that will be it for this video i hope you liked it and if you did like it please don't forget to leave a thumbs up below also if you're not yet a subscriber uh, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon so that you get instant updates from my uh, channel about my new releases yeah i think that's it if you have any doubts feel free to comment down. I love reading your comments. I will go through them even though I may not reply to all of them, but I still do go through all the comments under my video. So feel free to comment down and I'll meet you in the next video. Until then, cheers.